You would think I'd had it queued up already. Should a man always be the one leading in a relationship? I do have a clip that I ran across um, that kind of paints it in a different perspective. Kind of paints it in a different perspective. So let me go ahead and get this clip pulled up for you guys. Here we go. Mission is two people submitting to the mission of the relationship, mm -hmm. right? So it's and two people understanding oh where their strengths are and where their weaknesses are. They're understanding where they're good, where they're strong, and where they're weak, where they need a little bit of help. And in those areas, then they defer to the other person. So to me, that's what submission really means. In order to be an effective leader, you need to know when to move out the way. Oh, that's good. Um, mm, I like because, that. you know, I don't think it's always the man who has the vision in a relationship, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's always him that's supposed to. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if, right now. if let's say my, mm. my lady is a, is a lawyer, she pulling in 150 a year. Mm -hmm. The vision is clear. We're going to need a <laughs> few more years of what you got going on before mm -hmm. we start talking about who I'm supposed to be and what I got going on. And if I need to lead by moving out of her way so she can accomplish some things to better us, yes. then I need to be strong enough to do that. Ooh. I so that, I, I think a, a man's leadership. <laughs> the way we often define it at a societal level needs to come from him being able to go within himself and move his ego to the side because yes. a lot of men lead from an egotistical place that's where good. it's about mm -hmm. what I want, not about what we need. That's right. Oh, I like um, the mission. And, and so, yeah. Like All right, let's go ahead and hop into it. Should a man always lead, be the one leading in a relationship? I'm going to go ahead and go to you first, Marcus. What are your thoughts about that, sir? Uh, so I do believe a man should be always be the one leading, but way he described, it doesn't negate him being a leader. I think he could have added the caveat that the way it's coming off is seeming as though, uh, money deter is the determinant factor in the, in, in what leadership is. She can make 200 million a year. And as long as you secure on who you are as a man, that should not affect how you and her interact. It shouldn't change the level of respect she has for you. It shouldn't change anything, but the resources that y'all disposal, right? And, and for y'all to build whatever vision that is. Now, would that require you to make sacrifice to make sure she make that 200 million? Abso absolutely. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It, it, it would, like, I, I think I said it before, it was the time when my wife was making uh, more money than me. That didn't change a thing within the relationship. You know what I'm saying? And I say it proudly. I was proud of her and I'm cheerleading it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I want you to win. I'm not in competition. We working together. A win for you is a win for me. We both win it. That, that's how I look at that. So I, I don't think it changed the, the role of the relationship because of who brought in more money this month or who, you know what I'm saying? But again, I, I think that's uh, one of the things when we say we just, when you leave with your wallet, she leave with your wallet. So if your only attribute that, that you provide to your relationship is financial, then yeah, you'll run into that issue where when she make more money than the disrespect a star. But if you, if you lead from uh, like a divine purpose within yourself and she respecting that, I don't think you should ever have no issue with that. All right. Go ahead, Trev. Yeah, Marcus got it right there. Um, and that, that's what threw me off. Um, he did say a lot of good things, but um, when Marcus mentioned the uh, the money, making money, that doesn't mean that you're the leader now just because you're making money. That's crazy. Like, there's so much more that you should be offering as a man, as a leader, right? Um, for one, you know, there's three main purposes anyway. The P's, you got your providing that's one but then you're still a protector right if you have a woman protecting you have a serious issue and thirdly you're a problem solver that's the main thing and your woman should always be able to learn something for you there's so many things that you can do as far as like working on a car fixing stuff at the house right just making good decisions the money is not where it's at i i can't really subscribe to that part of it uh that that i don't know why he even brought that part up that really uh rubbed me the wrong way pause like for that that money thing man they could keep that out that right yo man i don't know I, I, for the first time in a while i kind of feel triggered with that part right there like to say the money because that doesn't mean anything to me man like that doesn't matter at all not this and listen i do believe a man should provide i i do but there are some instances where you have uh, it might be a hyper-functioning woman who can just go ahead and go get it like that. But she should still respect you as a man. You're still going to lead, right? And there are instances where you're going to say, hey, look, um, you go ahead and do this, right? She got that. You, the woman is going to lead in certain aspects, but that doesn't make her, that doesn't make you submit to her leadership. 
You know what I'm saying? Like she can handle this situation and she can lead that situation. That doesn't mean that you're now submitting to her, in my opinion. That's cool. It, it's it sounds crazy, Trev. Like you know those child stars, are they now in charge of their family? Like will you exactly. will, will you, you know what I'm saying? That don't make no sense. Like Webster or, or yeah. <laughs> Gary Coleman and <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of no my sense. one of my big issues with the word provide, right? Is is the way we use it is like Provide is the action version of provision. And if we just like break down and use etymology, right? Provision is foresight. It's provision. The word pro is advanced before ahead. And vision is, is a clear, obvious word. So provision is foresight. It has nothing to do with money. It has everything with, to do with having a plan and having a vision for what you want to create. That's one of men's gifts in the world. That's why manifestation starts with the word man. But regardless of that. Another issue I have with what he's saying is like he's trying to make it seem as though somehow the money is what makes a person a leader. But even in corporations, we have a CEO and a CFO, right? And the CFO's responsibility is to worry about the fundraising and worry and worry about bringing in the money. And the CEO's job is to lead the vision of the company and the mission of the company. So, again, this is another example where someone bringing in the finances still has nothing to do with the vision or the leadership of, of what's being led. So I don't understand why these guys keep keep saying that somehow the woman's supposed to have the vision or the man shouldn't uh, have the vision. I, I completely disagree. The man should always have the vision in the relationship. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him delegating as a leader roles to his partner. So if his partner's role in the relationship is to be the breadwinner, then that is her role in the same way my role might be sales in a corporation just because i'm the one closing the million dollar deals doesn't mean i'm the one who decides where we buy the next headquarters that doesn't mean that i get to decide what the price of the product is i'm just the guy bringing in the money that's my role but that has nothing to do with leadership leadership is the person who oversees all of the roles so i'll be and also a good leader always keeps people around them that know more than them in certain areas so yeah, you might be the scientist that that knows how to put the chips together for the iPhone. And I'm Steve Jobs at the end of the day. Nobody cares who, whatever the Japanese guy that, that, that sorted it all together was, nobody cares who that guy is. The person that matters is Steve Jobs because the entire thing is a culmination of his vision. So at the end of the day, I, I think it's just a ridiculous notion. And, and it's just weird to hear a guy even say that like, oh, if she's a lawyer, then that's what the vision is. Okay, so what happens if she decides that she doesn't want to be a lawyer anymore? That means the vision for your family is gone. Then on top of that, how is her career the vision for your family? I thought the vision for the family was things like where are we going to live? What kind of diet are we going to have? What kind of school are our kids going to? Um, you know, um, what kind of uh, insurance plan do we got set up? What kind of plans do we got for our kids' college fund? Like to me, like like how we paying these taxes, you know, you know, we need a fence, we need to do our our, our lawn, you know, we buying new land, we buying new houses, new products. To me, that's what we're planning on. So it's like to to be like, oh, she's a lawyer and that's the vision, bro. It, he sound like a leech, honestly. He sound like somebody who's just like, well, I find a girl who's getting a bag and that's my vision now. That's the vision. That's the plan. I'm gonna get behind her until she changed her mind. Then I guess he going. I guess he's hypergamous. That's what it sound like. It's weird to me. 